Hi, it's Mrs. Olmstead. Today I have a story that's part of the Biscuit Buttons and Pickles series. It's called Ivy Cottage by E.J. Taylor. For as long as Violet can remember, she has lived with Miss Biscuit in the big white house at the top of Primrose Hill. Miss Biscuit is the nanny there. Violet Pickles is a doll, a rag doll, except she is not an ordinary rag doll. She can write and talk and has very definite ideas about how most things should be done. Her eyes are blue and she wears glasses. She has long brown hair which is beautiful and freckles which she doesn't really like. Over the years, Violet and Miss Biscuit have looked after many children. Miss Biscuit would take them for long walks, prepare their lunch, and tuck them into bed at night. Violet would read them stories and give them very good advice. They were not always happy to hear what she had to suggest, so Violet would say, I'm only telling you this for your own good. And usually, she was right. It was a way of life that Violet loved, and she didn't think it would ever change. But one day, without warning, Miss Biscuit decided to retire. They were having tea on the porch when Miss Biscuit told Violet that they were moving to the country. Violet nearly fell off her chair. At first she laughed and said, Oh, don't be silly. We have always lived in the city. What on earth would we do in the country? Miss Biscuit put down her teacup and replied, I have planned everything. We will live in the cottage that my Uncle Henry left to me. We can buy a goat, and I'll plant a vegetable garden, and a strawberry patch, and some flowers. The country is full of wonderful things. Violet couldn't believe her ears. Miss Biscuit got up, cleared the teacups, and took the tray into the kitchen. Violet just sat in her chair for hours and stared at a fern. Every day while Miss Biscuit packed, Violet tried to persuade her to stay. Every night, failing that, she cried herself to sleep. She soon realized that Miss Biscuit was determined to go and crying only gave her the hiccups. They left the big white, taxi the big white house in a taxi and drove to the train station. Miss Biscuit had two suitcases, a hat box and her bicycle. Violet took a small suitcase, her teddy bear, and a picnic hamper which contained her favorite books, a paint set, a feather pillow, her blue blanket, and a silk ribbon. On the train, Miss Biscuit explained their routine, adding that she had written to Mr. Bickerstaff, an old friend of her Uncle Henry. Mr. Bickerstaff owned the general store and would meet them and drive them to the cottage. Violet sat by the window and tried not to cry. Violet fell asleep. When she woke up, the train had arrived at their station. She looked a little puzzled as they stepped onto the platform. There's no one here, she said, and she was right. They waited patiently for an hour. Finally, Miss Biscuit stood up. I think we had better get to the cottage on our own. But we don't know the way, said Violet. Miss Biscuit smiled. We'll find it. And she began stacking their luggage on the back of the bicycle. Violet looked worried. It seems like an awful lot to keep balanced, she said. We'll manage, Miss Biscuit replied. 
finding the cottage is our main concern. Let's concentrate on that, and the little things will take care of themselves. <laughs> she sat Violet in the basket on the handlebars, and off they went. Miss Biscuit was enjoying the ride. Violet was just beginning to relax when they crossed the bridge and came to a very steep hill. Down they went, faster and faster. Violet's hair was blowing in the wind and Miss Biscuit nearly lost her hat when suddenly there was a loud pop. Oh dear, said Miss Biscuit, I think the tire's gone flat. The bicycle began to swerve and before they knew it, they were across the road and into the ditch and Miss Biscuit and Violet went flying into the air. Hold on to my hand, cried Miss Biscuit. Fortunately, she had her umbrella, which she opened quickly. She and Violet floated down to, the, to a field and landed with a thump. Miss Biscuit sat up and straightened her hat. My goodness, she chuckled. Are you all right, Violet? Yes, I think I am, was the answer. Good. Then let's collect our things and be off. We've passed the bridge, so the woods can't be far. Oh, no, cried Violet. What's the matter? asked Miss Biscuit. Look, the bicycle. The wheels come off. Miss Biscuit turned to look. Oh, dear. Well, never mind. We'll just have to walk. Walk? cried Violet in disbelief. Miss Biscuit stood up. Now, Violet, try to cheer up and remember these little trials are sent to test us. They reached the woods at sunset and tried to hurry through while they still had some light. The sky grew darker until all they could see were shadows in the trees. It's creepy in here, said Violet, and suddenly she screamed. What's that over there? It's only an owl, Miss Biscuit reassured her. They continued quietly, listening to the sounds in the dark. 